Today, I'm using the Slow and Sear Master Kettle. This is gonna be the very first low and slow trip. We're gonna be taking it on it. And what better protein than cooking up a brisket? So let's get started. I have this 11 pound prime brisket that I'm gonna prep up. I got a lot of questions about the prep table in my boxing video. This is how it compares to the regular SNS kettle. It's a lot less stable and it's a smaller table. And as you can see, it would be very difficult to try and prep up a brisket this size on the regular kettle's table. I'll have more thoughts about the table along with all of the feature this girl comes with. But I figured I'd give you a little bit of a glimpse of what's coming up in my review. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that review. I picked it up for $4.29 a pound. And just out of curiosity, how much are you paying for brisket in your area? Leave it in the comments. Let's trim and season it with Heaven Made Products Brisket Rub. the kettle up to temperature, so let's place in the brisket, bad side up. I'll also touch up the brisket with a bit more rub. I'm leaving this brisket undisturbed for about four hours and keeping an eye on the temperature. I'm also gonna be making vent adjustments when needed. It's been three and a half hours later, so let's check. I love, love the color, but as you can see, there are two issues here. First, the curling of the flat, which is causing it to pool. The curling happened because of the high heat, I've been struggling keeping the temps down during this cook. Next time, I'm gonna start with a lot less lit charcoal. For reference, I'm also probing for internal temperature. It's around 158 internal temperature. It's either in the stall or approaching it soon, so let's cover again. And let it go undisturbed for a few more hours. Since I won't be eating this brisket today, I will not be wrapping. Six and a half hours later, the brisket has reached 195. The bark is beautiful. Well, minus the pulling area. But this brisket is for eating and not to win any beauty contest, so I'm really happy with it. So this brisket is not fully tender yet. My plan is to hold it overnight in sous vide and the whole one's gonna get it tender. Once the brisket has cooled to around 160, I'm gonna seal and my wife's gonna place it in the sous vide set at 150 temperature. It's gonna remain here overnight. It's the next day and the brisket has been holding for 12 hours and we're ready to slice into it. Now the pulled area doesn't look too bad, so that's good to see. Now let's slice. Now, if you remember my last brisket video, I did this hold overnight, but I didn't take the time for the brisket to go down in temperature before sealing. I also removed this brisket earlier before it achieved tenderness. Holding a brisket for a few hours is important, but the long hold has been a game changer for me and I highly, highly encourage it. That overnight hold, I cannot stress enough how important it is it definitely, definitely will elevate your brisket. It releases the stress of cooking it before your guests arrive and try to rush it if it's taking longer than expected. Also, say goodbye to those overnight cooks or having to wake up super early to get it started. You could invest in a food warmer, but personally, I don't have the budget. So I've been using my oven to hold it around 150 degrees, but even that is now being replaced by the sous vide and although it's messy dealing with all of this water, I still prefer holding it with sous vide versus holding it in the oven overnight. So it's a big win for me. There are definitely areas in the point that overcooked, but no biggie. Whether it's an oven set to a low temperature or whatever you have, you have to give a long hold a try. Let's eat. First, a little bit of that point. Mm, of course, we cannot neglect the flat. So take a bite of this. 
Mm. 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 A little burn in. Mm. 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 That burn in bite is always a treat. That was freaking terrific. Well, that seasoning is really, really awesome. It really elevated this brisket. Now I will say that I am very, very used to doing salt, pepper, and garlic. And it's been a long time since I put anything other than that on my brisket. But I'm glad I put that rub on there. Very, very delicious. No complaints about the taste, the rub, the tenderness. Everything is just amazing. So if you want to check out more of my cooks, be sure to check out this link over here. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.